Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our AP1 webinar series. This is our second series, and uh, we are joined by a couple of guests on this one. So I am joined by my esteemed colleague, Kelly Cutler, who's our knowledge manager here at InfoTrack. I'm also joined by Craig Taylor from Leap, and we are joined by Chris Farmery, who joins us, who's one of our clients, who will be talking about his experience of use and his team using the AP1s. So without further ado, let's, let's all understand why we're here. So in April 2021 this year, basically, or last year, sorry, took a giant leap to moving away from paper-based processes. Sorry, I'm just going to quickly minimize that and just bring this across. There we go. Uh, more than 100,000 applications have been received through the Electronic Digital Registration Service, or EDRS. Uh, requ requisitions on basic errors are down 25% and applications are processed and completed in half the time of an uploaded application, meaning law firms will now save time and reduce their risk. From November this year, the land registry will no longer accept scanned or PDF copies of AP1s for changes to existing titles via their portal. However, the good news, InfoTrack already has a solution in place and has done for some time you'll be able to use our AP1 service, meaning no one needs to reinvent the wheel. Secondly, you can take advantage of this integration as our AP1 product, like all the other products, integrates back into Leap. So I'm gonna pass you over to Kelly shortly and she can actually run you through all the features and functionality. All I would ask is if you have any questions, please use the uh, Q&A box, or we can use the chat box, ideally the Q&A, because the Q&A box is records all the questions. And without further ado, I will now pass you over to, to Kelly. Kelly, over to yourself. You just... uh, thanks, Rich. Um, hi, everybody. So as mentioned, um, I'm Knowledge Manager here at InfoTrack. So I'm just going to go through the upcoming changes and then I'm going to go into our AP1 solution. I'm just going to switch my camera off because I'm sure you'd rather see the presentation than my face. So bear with me just one second. I'll switch over. To my presentation. Okay, so the um, land registry digital AP1 mandate. So what is it? So from November 2022, we will no longer accept scanned or PDF copies of AP1s for changes to existing titles using the land registry portal. So actually currently up to 80% of AP1 submissions involve uploading physical paper documents. So what is the change? So current submissions are electronic applications, so known as the EDRS, which is a, a, they're basically PDF or a scanned form, which are uploaded onto the system for it to be read and reviewed by a caseworker as part of a manual process. Digital um, registration service, so the DRS, is when information is added in as data in predefined fields. So capturing it this way actually allows the system to read the data and check for any errors. So no more EDRS, we're moving to the DRS. So why is the LAM registry going digital? So it's because of current manual process delays and costs, um, high number of requisitions, uh, high volume of support calls, so there are long waits and poor service, lack of requisition management tool, and to protect the register's data integrity. So what does this mean for the industry? It means quicker processing times, digitalization of the process, online guidance for submissions, fewer errors and reduction in requisitions, and the opportunity for further innovation. So what things does a law firm need to consider? So change management is the first one. There are gonna be change challenges, so get, get ahead of the change. Um, November will be round very quickly before you know it. Um, staff training catered to individuals and obviously ongoing real-time support. So productivity, registrations will be digital only, so no paper or PDF forms. You need to consider software suitability, so your integrations, um, and the ability to directly liaise with the caseworker as well. And then from a compliance point of view, you need to have an audit trail on how to report to regulators, full firm visibility of all matters, including requisition management tool um, and key dates automation. So what are your solutions? 
uh, the new digital process through the land registry DRS service, or to use a land registry partner integrated through the business gateway like InfoTrack. So just to give you some stats on InfoTrack, uh, we're actually the key business partner and biggest user of land registry. We've been doing digital AP1 since 2016. We have six years of continuous software improvement. We've managed to reduce requisitions by up to 30%. And we do over 550,000 submissions a year. And I think that's actually nearing on more six, uh, 600,000 now. So what do digital AP1s by InfoTrack look like? So you get full guidance and expert support for every application. Uh, form flexibility, so multiple forms in one application, such as shared ownership. Um, integrated with leading CMS, as well as lender panels. A one-page form pre-populated and linked to HMRC's STLT5 and electronically signed deeds. And our unique AP1 dashboard uh, with application overview, auditing tools, requisitions and cancellations. And looking ahead, what are we going to do? We're going to continue to invest in more experts for additional support. We're going to continue to expand our integration partners. We're going to add new lender management panels and we're going to continue to reinvest back into the system. And there's just a testimonial from one of our long-standing clients who uses um, both STLT and AP1 through InfoTrack. I'm just going to switch my screen now to our AP1 solution. So <clears throat> AP1 can be found in the post-completion workflow, naturally sitting behind the SDLT, where we similarly integrate with the HMRC and allowing you to digitally submit your stamp duty returns. So using both the post-completion service services allows you to submit these in under five minutes. As I've mentioned, <clears throat> InfoTrack released our AP1 product back in 2016, and we continue to work very closely with the LAM registry to develop the business gateway services across the LAM registry services. What you see here is our latest AP1 software, which has been built with the aim to make your post-completion process faster, more accurate, and reduce the potential for unnecessary requisitions. So I'm gonna take you to here, our, our one page smart interactive form. So like all InfoTrack products, your matter reference tells us about information already contained within your matter. So depending on whether you're accessing InfoTrack from your case management system, or depending on the orders you've already placed with us, we can populate up to 90% of your AP1 for you. I'm just gonna put my matter reference in here. This is so important when it comes to reducing the time it takes to complete your AP1, removing the need to rekey information and reducing the potential for missed information. On this matter, I've already ordered a register and submitted my STLT return. So as we work through the form, you'll be able to see how much information is already pre-populated for you. All required fields are asterisk, so you won't be able to submit your application with missing information. Registration type is our first required field. And for land registry portal customers, you should be used to selecting the registration type. But if you are unsure as to the registration type relevant to your application, you can head over to our FAQs for definitions, plus lots of other AP1s, tips and tricks. Today, we're going to be running through a simple discharge, transfer and charge application affecting the whole of the title. So dealing is the relevant registration type. Our title number has already populated over, but we are able to add on further titles and we'll also verify the titles automatically for you, showing the address um, and pending registration status, reducing the risk of cancellation of your application due to an invalid title. We've also pre-populated the local authority and the postcode. So now we can move on selecting the priority applications we're looking to change the register with. Simply select the drop down to see the wide range of application types easily identifiable with their form code and description. We also organize applications into common forms and form bundles, making it quick and easy to select common applications like discharge, transfer and charge. And just like most forms, our AP1 form is about working left to right, top to bottom, reviewing the information from your file and documents and completing the relevant fields. We also integrate um, with our sign it for deeds products. So where your deeds have been electronically signed on selecting yes, we'll automatically look for and upload your conveyances certificate in supporting documents. 
If your deeds are not signed electronically, then you can simply upload them here and confirm their certification. For those who are integrated with your case management, you'll be able to select files associated with that matter only. If you need to move the order in which your application type should be registered or removed from the title, simply drag and drop. There's no limit on the number of applications you can submit um, on your AP1. And if you can't find an application that matches your deed, simply select AP1, change the register, upload your deed and proceed to the next section. We'll automatically calculate your lead application fee using the pre-populated consideration value from your SDLT submission. So no need to use a fee scale or a calculator. We'll also automatically upload your and attach your SDLT five. Um, so the, that it reduces the risk of it being forgotten and a requisition being raised. So here in supporting documents, you'll be able to upload any supporting file like consent forms, power of attorneys, countersigned documents and so on in one place. So they're all located under there. On the right hand side, all, all the way throughout the form, we've added some handy guidance when completing the sections, plus tips to help reduce common requisitions. For new users that may be starting to submit without any prior knowledge of the paper AP1, these guides can really help users better understand the sections and the land registry's requirements. Now we're going to move on to the party details. Here we've split what traditionally was panel 13 into three manageable sections applicants, proprietors and other parties. As missing or incorrect party information is a common cause of requisitions, we wanted to group information in a way where you can move through the sections consciously, ticking off the required fields from left to right without having to jump around the form or clicking through multiple pages. So as you can see here, the majority of the work has been done for us. The applicant's name, annual details as the lodging conveyance are already pre-populated. We can also complete this applicant's role field because you've told us that you're lodging a transfer and charge. All that we need to do here is simply um, enter the lender's details for the applicant's new mortgage. And as you simply start typing, we'll suggest relative banks populating their address for service too. We can also confirm our details as the lodging conveyancer. If your firm's process is for support staff to create the AP1s and then the conveyancers lodge the application, you can simply select the lodging conveyancer from a list of users within your firm here, and you can update their contact details here if needed. Now we move on to the proprietors section. We call it this because we know that there is a transfer being lodged and so a registered proprietor will be a transferor. As we've ordered the register on the matter, we're able to populate the proprietor's names here. We're also able to populate the, conve populate the conveyance's details from the STLT submission and again associate the borrower roles for the discharge application and transferor for the transfer. I just need to add in the lender's name here. If there are any other parties within the application, then they can be entered under this um, other parties section. So for example, if we have any power of attorney or beneficiary, et cetera, you can add it under this section. Now we move on um, to the final um, section in the associate application section. So this task is to similarly just review the application. We have the two borrowers and the lender associated to the discharge the transferee and the two transferors for the TR1 and the borrower and the lender for the new charge. Um, and on the left hand panel, we'll update with the key information to help you review the information supplied as you go. All that we have to do here is to um, complete the address for service for the applicant. So you can enter the address for service for each proprietor yourself, including their postal email or DX address. Disclosable overriding interest is defaulted to no for ease and again to speed up the time it takes to complete the form. And here I like to cause uh, an integration within an integration. Um, if you are integrated with um, and use LMS, you can link your application to your LMS case number and will automatically um, send them your submission receipt and then completion of registration details once your application is complete. Then we move um, to the note section. Um, so it's a, full, a fully flexible form. So any information that you need to put in um, to let the caseworker know, you can add into this section um, here. We also integrate with our MRO1 lodgement software. So we'll pre-populate the certification wording straight into the note section for you here as well. 
Finally, at the bottom of the form is where you can confirm the credentials used to submit the application. These should be stored in your InfraTrack settings, but on occasions where your LAN registry EDRS account changes or say you update the password, you can update them here as well. And you can also include any third party recipient information here for all correspondence about this application. Simply select a colleague from the drop down or select other user to manually enter the details. On save or print, we'll populate a paper AP1 form use, so it'll be a form that you're familiar with. Familiar with. You can review or download and print and share where required, and we'll of course send you an email over or send the file back to your case management. If you're happy to submit your application instead, we'll send your EAP1 to the LAM registry and instantly we'll return a submission receipt, showing your application's LAM registry reference so you know that the application has made it to the day list and therefore has priority. I'm now going to head over to um, our AP1 dashboard. As with many of our products, we have like a big brother overview of your submissions. So if I select an AP1 dashboard, you can hear all of the submissions that you've put through. Um, you can filter through them using the top boxes up here. So requisition outstanding, cancellations, completed. Um, we also have this handy export feature, which allows you to put your submissions into a CSV file so you can filter through and look at for auditing purposes. I'm just going to uh, select one. We've got requisition acknowledged. So here you have like a WhatsApp style chat with your caseworker. So you have a full audit trail of the information that has been sent and received. Um, you can also check the day list for any pending registrations. You can select um, or look at any related files associated with the AP1. And again, you can add any, add any additional recipients. But going back to the requisitions here, uh, we have some really handy little features such as being able to um, update any internal notes. So if you've got a couple of people dealing with the um, post completions, you can deal with the AP ones through here and you can let your colleague know that it's being dealt with. You can request um, further HMLR action using this tool and you can respond to the requisitions. So you can completely free type and send any message that you need to the caseworker. But we also have this handy um, feature up here called regenerate details. So we know panel 13 is a real pain point um, and it may be there's spelling mistakes or party roles are incorrect or, or whatever it may be. So you can make those amendments using them here. So as you can see, as I'm typing, it's putting it in a format that we know the LAM registry are going to accept. So that's going to prevent another requisition being raised. You can add any additional parties and you can upload any supporting documents as well. And again, of course, you can free type, as I said. And along with um, the dashboard, we also have our handy calendar. So if I select on the calendar, you can look at any of your OS priorities or cancellations. You can do that by year, month, week, um, and you'll have complete overview of that. And that is our AP1 solution. Um, back to you, Rich. Excellent. <clears throat> Thank you ever so much for that, Kelly. And I hope everybody managed to get as much information from that as possible. This is on demand. So we will be sharing the video with you in the next couple of days once we've done a little bit in the editing. Um, Kelly, we've had a few questions uh, come through. Uh, first one's from Jonathan Jones. Is there a plan to implement a system for Welsh LLT applications? And if there is a Welsh property purchase or transfer, does this prevent the electronic AP1 application via InfraTrack? Okay, that is something we would like to do, but we don't have that feature just yet. So we'll keep you updated. Excellent, thanks for that question, Jonathan. Um, we had one person, they missed the first five, uh, first five minutes. Please, can you advise if there is, I don't know if it's new or view, or is if there is a view for submitting through InfoTrack? If there is a, sorry, Rich, could you just repeat? It says if there's a few for submitting through InfoTrack. If there's a few to submit. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we we, we can come back to that one. I can, I can yeah. liaise with that person directly after that's fine. No worries at all. Uh, we had one from uh, Sophie. Oh, is there a fee? That's it. Is there a fee for admitting, for admitting through, submitting through InfoTrack? There is a nominal fee uh, for submitting it through InfoTrack and we can contact you directly to discuss that. Excellent. Fantastic. Uh, so a uh, couple of questions from Sophie Poulter. Uh, so Thanks for hosting this today. So thank you uh, for that feedback. Uh, they have a few challenges with the system um, and dealing with difficult transactions. For example, we currently have a transfer, remortgage and shared ownership 
purchase, purchase for one client, would we lodge these as separate applications? Okay, good question. What I'm going to do is we have an absolutely amazing um, help desk team um, that actually can talk anyone through their submissions and applications so what we'll do is get you in touch with them I'll get one of them to give you a call back and they'll be able to talk you how to through it through how to do it through the system thank you Kelly we had a couple more through from Sophie mm -hmm. uh, love the integration with LMS mm -hmm. but will integration with LMS prevent their monthly update requests um, no, they'll still get um, their month. They'll basically still have to update them monthly. That's something we're in discussion with LMS about at the moment, but you will still have to, to just um, update them. OK, excellent. The application should be lodged as a new lease against the titles. Um, a couple of reference numbers in there with an attached document registration against, again, reference in there. Uh, Mala, we'll come back to you on that question because uh, I, I think that, that might be a little bit of uh, one we'll have to take offline. A uh, couple more that we've had in. Um, uh, my application was cancelled in InfoTrack, but was accepted in LR, NL, LR portal, land registry portal. Oh, OK, that could be down to the particular caseworker. So if you have the matter, it would be great for us to have a look at that. And um, yeah, again, we'll take that offline and uh, we'll speak um, with help desk on that one. Brilliant. We have one through from Jacqueline. Expedite requests submitted through LEAP are not reaching HM land registry. Is this a universal problem that is known or is this specific to our company? We do have Craig Taylor from LEAP who will be able to answer a couple of questions if Kelly can't answer that one. Yeah. OK, so there is the expedite feature. So that expedite feature came about um, because of the pandemic. Um, so when you expedite through land registry it goes off to the team when you expedite it through um, infotrack it goes off directly to the caseworker so what many of our clients do is they use our feature but they'll also um, use the land registry feature so it goes to both teams so you've got the best possible chance of that ap1 being expedited excellent uh, we've had one through on the chat what happens to applications by post can we now do them by infotrack um, the ones that are being done with their first registrations, um, the land registry still require you to um, go via post. It still needs to be done the same way. Excellent. Thanks for that. All those other questions, we will take them offline and come back to you as soon as possible. Um, now we're going to move on to uh, Chris Farmery, uh, who is the head of conveyancing at OGC Legal based in North Lincolnshire. So, Chris, if you can just... Um, take your camera off, uh, well, take your sound off mute and bring up your camera. There's Chris. Hello, Chris. Thank you for joining us on this uh, webinar. As you've seen, Kelly's gone through the AP1 webinar. Just got a couple of quick questions for, for you and your users at the firm. Um, how does being integrated with your CMS support the management submission and monitoring of your AP1 applications? Oh, thanks, Rich. It makes a uh, big difference. I think the, the key bit to me is that everything is ported back to to leap to the matter itself so you're not looking around for post or emails that uh, may or may not have been saved there and uh, also that ap1 dashboard to be able to see what the entire company is doing and where those uh, requisitions are or um, whether or not the applications have been completed at a single glance makes a huge difference so. and given that a large percentage of the submission is now pre-populated leading to a higher level of confidence in the accuracy of your data. Do you feel more confident that there will be a reduction in errors and or raise requisitions? I do, because at the end of the day, we're all human. If we can take that human element out of re-entering the same information several times, then we we solve that, um, that accuracy issue. We only need Excellent. to get it right once then, and then it's there. Brilliant. Um, one question that we've always had come up a lot, and one that I know a lot of residential law firms, is workflows within a conveyancing department. How does this two-way integration with your with with uh, with Leap help to streamline your workflow? It works well because it, it's all in the same place. So I also use Leap to manage my workflow in terms of their um, their their other products that they do. So it it's a button next to it that it's all together. You're not having to go somewhere else. Um, and no, it just, no kind of merging or going across all loads of screens. It just kind of works, yeah. as they would say. It does, yes. Excellent. And lastly, uh, Chris, given that from November this year, the land registry will no longer accept the PDFs or scan copies of AP1s for changes to existing titles using their portal, 
What advice would you give to a firm who is still submitting their AP1s manually? And shameless plug here, would you recommend InfoTrack solution to your peers? I, I would, yes. I've used InfoTrack now for numerous years and wouldn't think about moving. Excellent. Brilliant. That's music to my ears. Thank you ever so much for joining us, Chris. We really appreciate your firm and the input uh, from the users. Lastly, it brings me on to uh, Craig, uh, Craig Taylor, who's from Leap. So if you have any questions for, for Craig at all, Craig's just going to give you a very quick overview of the Leap and InfoTrack integration. Craig, a pass on to yourself. Yeah, well, well, thanks to Kelly. Not a great deal to add. I think that was a superb uh, demonstration. I think really detailed. So uh, no, thanks to Kelly on that. And obviously, thanks to, uh, to Chris for his uh, kind, supportive, supportive words. Um, I mean, from my point of view, just really proud of the, the, the end to end ecosystem that we have here at Leap. Um, hopefully, giving the clients everything they need to be consistent and compliant throughout the life cycle of their matter. Um, I think the close relationship we and, and the two way integration we have with InfoTrack fulfills the digital journey for our mutual clients, um, whether that's from onboarding and verification all the way through to the AP1 that we've just had a look at. Um, and I think between us, our, our, our common goal is really ensuring increased efficiencies, which will naturally drive server productivity across the firm. Um, the vast majority of our firms now choose to work with InfoTrack. Um, and last words, I suppose, for those that don't, definitely encourage you to take a closer look. It's available on the Leap ribbon um, and uh, you know, provides all the benefits that Kelly and, and also Chris have just spoken about. So uh, thank you all. Brilliant. Thank you very much for that, Craig. Um, what we'll do is, as I mentioned, this is available on demand. So what I'm going to do is just quickly put in the chat now, which is the link to the Leap and InfoTrack integration. This is a two minute uh, video. It's not Hollywood blockbuster, but if you want to know how the integration works, a very top overview and share with your colleagues, the, uh, the link is now in the comments below. We're just coming up to 11.30. Uh, lastly, to say a massive thank you to Kelly for your insights and the overview of the AP1, Craig Taylor from Leap, um, and lastly, Chris, uh, for joining us and giving the insights into what it's like working with Leap and using the InfoTrack AP1. Thank you, everybody. Uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.